reversing a string. I had another question from a student about reversing a string. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on doing that. Uh, one of the parts of the question was, he already knows the length of the string. So I'm going to quickly include that in the video of calculating that out. And then I'm gonna use that to walk backwards over the memory addresses and print out the characters in the string. So what might this look like in Python? Uh, so let's load up the Python shell and we'll declare a string. Uh, it's just sample uh, string and we know the length of the string is the length of string one, right? And then we got four i in, er, in range len, sh er, len string one, um, print uh, string one, and I'm going to take advantage of Python's negative indexing. Uh, but if you don't understand that, that's kind of not the point of this tutorial. So don't worry too much, but we'll print that out and we'll see that we'll go negative from the negative one index all the way to the start of the string. So let's go ahead and we'll hop back over into NASM and we'll vim into the loops file that I've been working in. Um, and we'll see here that uh, we're back at the beginning um, looping over a string. So. We can make some modifications to this. Uh, let's start out and we will copy this and we'll paste it in. So uh, this loop that we're gonna need here, I'm going to define a counting loop. And the counting loop needs to give me uh, the length of the string because I don't have it yet and I'm not going to assume for this tutorial that we do have it. So let's go ahead and uh, get that for ourselves. And we'll just clean up this, this logic here. So we're gonna need another register, or I'm going to use another register to store the string so far, so or the length of the string so far. So in this case, we'll set it to zero and we'll increment both RBX and increment uh, RCX as well. So every time we move to the next memory address, we're going to increment our counting variable. And when the loop terminates and we have the null character, we're going to exit the loop and RCX will now hold the length of the string. Now that we have the uh, length of the string stored in RCX, we can go ahead and work on the for char. I just quickly off camera cleaned up our for char loop. Um, we're going to implement new logic and whatnot, so we'll start from scratch there. So, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and we will put into uh, RBX just as before our value of string one, right? And then we will add to RBX. Uh, the value of RCX, or the length. And right now, this will put us uh, outside of the range of memory for string one, because we'll be one too far, right? Um, because obviously our first doesn't have, uh, our first character doesn't have an offset from, from itself. So we will actually just decrement RBX and uh, this will put us at uh, the tail of RBX. So this is the last memory address of, I guess, more specifically string one. So now we can come down into our for char. So um, simply what we can do is we're now going to compare RCX uh, and we're gonna compare it to zero. So whenever we hit uh, no more characters left in the string, we're done, right? And we've left it ahead by one, right? So what we can say is when we get to equaling zero, we're finished. Um, so whenever we're equal, uh, we'll go to end for char, right? And, it, and then we're into the exact same case as above. So we'll take... Uh, We'll move into AL, the value of the byte value that's at uh, RBX. And after we've printed that out to the screen, we'll now 
decrease the value or decrement RBX to move back one character in the string and we'll also decrement the value of RCX to say that we have one less character in the string and then we'll jump back into our loop and do it again so in short uh, we've moved the value into RBX uh, we've added the offset of the number of characters and made sure that we're within range of the string. And then in our loop, we compare to make sure that we still have characters remaining that need to be shown. When we run out of characters to show, we end our loop. And if we have characters to show and we're at a valid character, uh, we'll move that character into the register, print it out, print a new line, and then decrease, go to one, go to the next previous character, and remove the count or decrement the count by one to say that we've now got one less character we need to print out remaining. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll make it and run it and we get the sample output that we were expecting.